Milling Through History presents The Man Who Thought He Was King. Joshua Norton was born February 4, 1818, to Jewish parents who emigrated to South Africa. On November 23, 1849, Norton would sail to San Francisco. His reasons for doing so may have been part of the gold rush of that year. However, by 1852, Norton became a rather highly successful businessman within the city. In that particular year of 1852, though, China would cut off the importation of rice, and Norton, sensing a business opportunity, purchased a large amount from Peru, only to find his investment being beaten by the arrival of rice from competitors. With an, uh, with an ensuing lawsuit that Norton filed saying that the quality of his product was no good, Norton spent the better part of four years basically making himself broke in an attempt to go ahead and recoup his losses. This resulted by 1858 in Norton being forced to file for bankruptcy. On September the 17th, 1859, Norton, sensing that everything in the country was going wrong, decided to do something rather unique. He declared himself Emperor of the United States. He would say, quote, At the peremptory request and desire of a large majority of the citizens of these United States, I, Joshua Norton, formerly of Algoa Bay, Cape of Good Hope, and now, for the last nine years and ten months past of San Francisco, California, declare and proclaim myself Emperor of these United States, and in virtue of the authority thereby in me vested, do hereby order and direct the representatives of the different states of the Union to assemble in the musical hall of this city on the first day of February next, then and there to make such alterations in the existing laws of the Union as may ameliorate the evils under which the country is laboring, and thereby cause confidence to exist, both at home and abroad, in our stability and integrity. This proclamation was seen as a joke by the San Francisco Daily Evening Bulletin, which, in order to entertain its readers, decided to reprint it repeatedly for the city. Later on, Norton would also add on the title of Protector of Mexico. On October the 12th, 1859, Norton abolished Congress and called upon all those interested in addressing the issues of the nation to convene at Platt's Music Hall in San Francisco the following February. In addition to this, Norton called upon Major General Winfield Scott to use the power of the army to arrest the former members of Congress. Both of these royal decrees were, went largely ignored. In 1862, Norton called upon both the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant Church to ordain him emperor, which, in his opinion, would help resolve many of the issues which had arisen due to the Civil War. Following the war on August 12, 1869, Norton abolished both the Democrat and Republican parties, citing their parts in continuing the strife of the people in the United States. In the 1870s, with the rise of anti-Chinese sentiment occurring throughout San Francisco, Norton would often be found interjecting himself between rioters and would-be Chinese victims, reciting the Lord's Prayer repeatedly until the rioters dispersed. When visiting the city, tourists who came to San Francisco would often find Norton wearing a military uniform, and they would discover he would be inspecting all aspects of the city. While his uniform would begin to degrade, some folks believed he was a vagabond, and one neighborhood watch group would have him arrested, only to find Norton being released by the police commissioner and given a formal, formal apology by the police department. Norton would also create his own currency and spend it at restaurants which were willing to accept it. His flair for eccentricity became so well known that theaters would have a royal seat for him in the opening of any new show, and restaurants would have a table ready for him at any time. To not have the patronage or even the acknowledgement of the emperor in San Francisco was seen as an insult. On January the 8th, 1880, Norton would be going to attend a lecture at the California Academy of Sciences. While en route, he would collapse, and before any medical help could arrive, he passed away. For quite some time, people believed Norton was rather wealthy and instead feigned being poor. But a close examination upon his property discovered he was feign his feigning of being poor may have been the eccentricity itself, as he was completely destitute. A pauper's funeral had been arranged for him, but a number of businessmen in San Francisco band together and paid for an elaborate funeral, which drew in 10,000 people. 
The legacy of Emperor Norton is rather unique, as he was seen as a visionary, in that he thought of an idea for the creation of a League of Nations. In addition to this, he proposed the creation of a bridge or tunnel to connect Oakland with San Francisco. As of 2013, the Emperor Norton Trust has been working tirelessly to have part or even the whole of San Francisco's Bay Bridge to have the name Emperor Norton added to its title. While they do not think it would be possible to rename the whole bridge, adding it on would certainly be enough. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe for future episodes of Milling Through History, and leave comments below giving us episode ideas that you would like to see in the future.